Acunetics helps thousands of organizations secure their websites and web applications across the globe. Whether you're a one-person team ensuring the security of a few websites or a large organization interested in automating your web vulnerability assessment and management, Acunetics is here to help. Hi, my name is Rishabh and today I'll be talking about how we can detect session hijacking using rotating refresh tokens. Before I begin, I would like to clarify the terminology I'll be using. Uh, a session is essentially the period of time after login but before log out. Uh, session tokens are used by most APIs to identify the user who logged in. And session management is everything to do with how the session behaves. So what the session inactivity timeout is, what kind of tokens are being used, uh, what you know, how these tokens are stored, and how they're revoked. Um, so wh why do we care about session security in the first place? Um, you know, we have such great login security that prevent you know, phishing attacks and mitigate all the downsides of using passwords. If we were to implement them in our web apps, wouldn't that be enough? However, uh, if you think about, you know, if you think about all the possible attack vectors available, just securing login is not enough. And and the reason for that is that most APIs use uh, session tokens to identify the user, which means that if these tokens were stolen, or uh, they could be used to gain unauthorized access to the account regardless of what login technology is being used. And we see this in real life as well where uh, in a couple of months ago a few YouTube influencers accounts were stolen, uh, were, sorry were hijacked because the session tokens were stolen uh, and the attackers could access those accounts even though they had two-factor authentication enabled. Um, the way the attackers got access to the tokens um, was through um, social engineering. They essentially uh, got the influencers to install a malware on their computer and the malware then uh, took the session tokens of YouTube and sent them off to the attacker. The attacker then had to just paste those cookies in the browser and um, they could access the influencers accounts. Um, malware is not the only way that uh, you know, that can be used to steal sessions um, as seen on this slide um, some of these ways are simpler to solve for the other uh, than others so for example all the ones in green can be solved through following best practices for session management however the ones in red can only be solved by uh, detecting session hijacking so how do people currently detect session hijacking there are essentially two ways of doing that um, one is to bind the ip address to the session. So if the IP address were to change during a session, the IP address of the request, uh, that is essentially assumed as session hijacking and the session is revoked. Uh, while this would prevent more session hijacking attempts, um, this leads to a terrible user experience uh, in case the user, you know, users travel around the city or use a VPN. The other method is device fingerprinting. Uh, we essentially bind the session to a particular device fingerprint that is unique to you know, that device and that browser. And if this fingerprint changes, uh, you know, we revoke the session. Uh, the problem with this is that um, if the attacker uses the front end uh, to steal sessions, they can also use, uh, they can also compute the device fingerprint uh, at that time and uh, essentially send that off to themselves, uh, which would enable them to use that for session hijacking. So what can we do better? Like how can we improve the system? And, and that's where rotating refresh tokens comes into the picture. Uh, before I begin, you know, before I describe how that works, um, this is also being recommended by one of the latest OAuth RFCs that says that for browser-based apps, uh, we must use rotating refresh tokens uh, since it detects session hijacking. The way it works is that uh, we essentially have the user who authenticates themselves to the server. The server returns an access and a refresh token. Uh, the access token is short-lived. Uh, the refresh token is long-lived. Uh, and the access token is used for every API call. Now, because the access token is short-lived, it's going to expire, at which point the API calls will fail. Um, then we can use the refresh token to get a new set of tokens. Um, and continue the session using the new access token. At some point, both the access token and the refresh token will expire, after which the user has to log in again. 
Now the crucial part in this flow is is um, is that when we use the refresh token, we get back a new access token and a new refresh token. And this is this is why we essentially use the word rotating refresh tokens. They're essentially one-time use only. And this creates a dynamic that allows us to detect session theft. And uh, let me illustrate that to you. So we have three parties here, the user's browser, the attacker's browser, and the API. The user has uh, their refresh and access token, uh, and they can use the access token to call the API successfully. Let's assume that the attacker has also got the user's refresh token and access token, R0A0, and they can also use the access token uh, to form session hijacking. But before the access token is, um, the access token is short-lived, which means that it's going to expire soon, or hopefully it has already expired. Uh, at that point in time, the user will be forced to use their refresh token. And when they do so, what's going to happen is that uh, the user will get back a new set, a new refresh token, a new access token, as we saw earlier as well, and their old refresh token will be revoked. So in this case, we use R0, get back R1, A1, and R0 is revoked. Now, because A0 is expired, the attacker will also have to use R0, and that's a very clear sign to the backend that something is wrong because R0 should have never been used after R1 has already been issued. Uh, and therefore, the backend can uh, revoke the entire session. Now, like this makes sense, uh, but there are a few problems with this. The first one being that uh, in step two, the attacker can use A0 to successfully do session hijacking, um, and, and that's a problem. The way we can solve this first and foremost is to make sure that the access token lifetimes are very small, and we can also combine rotating refresh tokens with IP address binding. Uh, what we do is essentially we bind the IP address to the access token, and you know when the attacker would use the access token, we would um, you know mostly from a different location, uh, we could check that the IP address address has changed, and therefore uh, instead of waiting for A0 to expire naturally, we essentially revoke A0 immediately. This would force the users to use their refresh tokens, and session hijacking would be detected. The other problem is that session hijacking uh, detection only happens when both the user and the attacker have used their refresh tokens. Um, now, we can easily imagine a scenario where the attacker has stolen the user's tokens, uh, the user essentially uh, you know, became inactive or has stopped using the app for a while. During that period, the attacker can uh, continue using the refresh token and the access token they have uh, without any problem. Uh, the only time session theft would get detected is when the user would use the app next, which could happen in a few hours or a few days, depending on the nature of the app. Uh, the way we would minimize this risk is by binding the refresh token to a particular device. And there are two ways of doing this. One is using device fingerprinting. Uh, however, we saw that you know it's not it's fairly easy to spoof. The other way, which is more robust, is uh, TLS binding. We essentially uh, bind the refresh token to a TLS session, and, and this way, uh, it make it much more difficult for the attacker to use the refresh token. The problem with this is that not many browsers today support it, and therefore, uh, deploying this methodology in a production environment is probably not going to work. Uh, that being said, uh, the method I just described is the best method we have as of today. And therefore, from a security point of view, it makes a lot of sense to implement this, even though it's not foolproof. When we're talking about implementation, there are essentially three challenges. The first one is parallel request to refresh API. So um, in this diagram, uh, in step number three, um, if the front end were to issue more than one request to the refresh token using R0, what would happen is the first request would revoke R0 and the second one would yield a false positive of session theft. Um, this scenario can happen when uh, if a user is visiting an app after a long time or after the access token has expired and uh, we generally tend to have many API calls in parallel on, you know, on app loading, um, which can cause this issue. The second problem is network failures. So, um, 
when the user uses R0, we expect that the front end receives R1 and A1. But if the front end is in a poor network uh, network uh, location, then they may not receive R1 or A1, which means that they have to uh, use R0 again, which would yield false, which would yield the false positive because R0 has already been revoked. So the common the the root cause of these issues is that we are revoking R0 uh, before knowing that the new set of tokens uh, has actually you know, been delivered to the client. And the way we solve that issue is by maintaining what I call a refresh token family. Essentially, we want to keep track of multiple refresh tokens per session that could all be alive at the same time. Um, let me illustrate that through this diagram. So in step number three, when we use R0 for the first time, instead of revoking R0, we only we generate R1 and A1 and, and that's it. And in the second API call, we generate R2 and A2, and that's it. We do not revoke R0. And the reason we don't revoke R0 is because from the perspective of the API, the API does not know which, uh, API does not know if the new tokens have even reached the front end or which one has reached the front end. Uh, the only point in time it will know is if the front end uses them. So for example, in this case, let's assume that the front end has R2 and A2. Um, therefore, when the front end uses A2, the API layer can be sure that the front end also has R2 and go about revoking R0 and R1. What this means is that um, we essentially have to maintain a parent and child hierarchy. So we have R0 and A0, which will essentially be the parent of its children, R1 to Rn. So in the previous example, here R0 is the parent of R1 and R2. But uh, from a system point of view, you can have like n number of children, and uh, all of these refresh tokens and access tokens uh, are alive, and any one of them can be used by the client. Um, and as soon as one of them is used, let's say R3 or A3, we can go about revoking the sibling uh, tokens and the parent token, and also promoting R3 to become the parent of its own children. And the the tree sort of continues uh, continues in that way. Now, implementing a data structure like this in a scaled and distributed system can be a challenge, uh, but there are solutions out there for it, which I'll be happy to go into if anyone is interested. Uh, you can reach reach out to me uh, later on after the presentation. Um, so what are the overall business benefits of um, having you know this kind of session? Uh, you know, apart from uh, the increase in app security and like, preventing of another vector of identity theft, uh, we can also keep users logged in for a longer period of time. This means that we can provide them a better experience, which means they are happier and business is better. Uh, and we can do this whilst maintaining session security as if it were, it were short-lived it was, it was short sessions, uh, assuming that the users are active. Uh, the other benefit is in compliance. So uh, if one were to implement the system I described, uh, you would essentially be checking all the boxes and all the compliances uh, today, as well as if there are any changes in the future, uh, because compliance, compliance is always a little bit behind the RFCs and we are already compliant with the RFCs. Um, the final uh, the business benefit is improvement in API performance. So because we have two sets of tokens, the access and the refresh token, and the access token is short-lived, we can essentially use a JWT as an access token and uh, have sub millisecond session verification latency. Uh, and we can do that without, like, with, uh, without any of the risks of, uh, of a JWT. Um, thank you for your time. I hope this presentation was useful. Um, and uh, feel free to reach out to me on my email or Twitter for any questions that uh, you may have about the presentation. Thank you.